the nightly business report good evening tonight the central bank releases its second monetary policy report for 2024 in keeping with the requirements striving to improve transparency and accountability sri lanka launched its first ever social protection policy spearheaded by the department of national planning under the finance ministry Following a prolonged run of gains, the stock market could not maintain its positive momentum, closing the week on a negative note. And Alibaba misses market expectations for the first quarter revenue as the company's domestic e-commerce sales comes under pressure from the cautious spending by Chinese consumers. From Studio 24, here's Vinod Wanasuriya. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka released its second monetary policy review for 2024 in keeping with the requirements of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka Act number no. 16 of 2023. The content of this report is based on information that the Monetary Policy Board of the Central Bank is considered in formulating the monetary policy decision during July 2024 review. The monetary policy report provided forward-looking insights about the economy, particularly in terms of inflation and economic growth. The report also aims to provide an assessment of risks to projections of inflation and economic growth considering the ongoing and expected developments on domestic and global fronts. Through this report, the central bank strives to improve transparency and accountability by communicating a rationale behind its recent monetary policy decisions. Sri Lanka marked a significant milestone this morning with the official launch of its first ever national social protection policy. This groundbreaking initiative is being headed by the Department of National Planning under the Finance, Economic Stabilization and National Policies Ministry marks a major step forward for the country. It enhances Sri Lanka's efforts to support its citizens through comprehensive social protection measures. The policy has been meticulously developed through a highly participatory process, ensuring the involvement of all major stakeholders. Treasury Secretary Mahinda Sirivardhana emphasized the importance of this collaborative approach, noting that public input was a crucial component in shaping the final policy. At its core, the National Social Protection Policy is designed to help individuals and societies manage risk and volatility, protect against poverty and inequality, and in enhances access to economic opportunities throughout the life cycle the policy's framework is built around three key goals resilience equity and opportunity these goals are to be achieved through a range of instruments categorized into several critical pillars The Sri Lanka Tourism Promotions Bureau has been on a slow but steady journey promoting the destination with its promotional campaigns and marketing strategies this year mainly focusing on the new tourism brand identity Sri Lanka you will come back for more which indicates a new beginning in its success at a special media conference held today morning the chairman of the Sri Lankan Promotion Tourism Bureau Chalaka Gajabahu stated that they are confident that the arrival numbers will pass 1.3 million at the end of this month and they are eyeing a target of 2.3 million tourists at the end of the year overall target is as you know from the beginning of the year was 2.3 million so last 5 months we are expecting another million million plus uh, to go forward uh, from the industry what we hear from the numbers that we are looking at uh, the, the the european season is coming up so october november december is going to be very heavy month we hope that the country situation will remain as easy as is because if you remember in 2022 when we took over all the the, the travel advisories was on a very high uh, level you know it took some time for us to bring those down and a key note that i want to make is to be very clear in terms of a campaign what we did for the first uh, for the past one and a half two years was the seeing is believing campaign a lot of people do not know this i want this for you to take down very clearly we have brought down more than 200 influencers bloggers and bloggers and media personnel uh, to sri lanka to show the country is back to normal from 2022 so that has actually worked in a very good way for the whole industry and we did that with the private sector support as well uh, in terms of the return because the thing is you know what 
uh, especially I said this many a time before as well, in all the international media networks and the digital platforms, all what they showed was the, 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 the negativity. negativity of the country. But then, you know, with, with empty petrol sheds or uh, empty uh, medicine queues or whatever, they, it was not news. Negative media sensationalism is marketable, not, but not positive media. That's why the influencer campaign had worked. If you look at in all travel indexes, every single travel index, uh, index uh, in, in the world, we are in the top five, whether it's a Fortune, the Forbes, the Times of India, uh, and a lot of other travel indexes, all those details are available. We'll share that with you as well. Uh, Madhu has a detailed report on that. So that is all good news. So we hope to continue and carry forward this message. Sri Lanka state-run Ceylon Electricity Board has reported a profit of 34.5 billion rupees for the three months ended on the 30th of June. Interim accounts showed a 67% jump compared to 20.7 billion rupees in the same quarter in 2023, despite a fall in the revenue. The profits came from lower financial expenses and falling costs, even as a tariff reduction and reduced revenues. The state-run utility provider reported profits of 119.2 billion rupees for the first six months of this year, compared to a loss of 13.7 billion rupees last year. The CEB's finance cost in the June quarter fell more than 60% to 7.6 billion rupees compared to 19.3 billion last year, helping the profits. CEB's revenues fell 16.5% to 146.6 billion rupees in the June quarter. Costs of sales fell 20% to 109.6 billion rupees and the gross profit also fell 4.3% to 37 billion rupees for the quarter. In the six months up to the end of June, CEB revenues were 314.4 billion rupees, up 5.9% from the 297 billion rupees, while cost of sales also fell from 214.6 billion rupees from the previous year's 279 billion rupees. Gross profits were 99.7 billion rupees. CEB consolidated profits were 122.8 billion rupees with other shareholders of subsidiaries accounting for 1.6 billion rupees. Let's take a short commercial break now some updates from the stock market right after this. This is the nightly business report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. After a prolonged streak of gains, the stock market couldn't sustain its positive momentum, ending the week on a down note. Despite four consecutive days of upward movement, the market closed with losses today, breaking a five-day winning streak. For today's market summary, let's now connect with Janisha Katuapitiya from Capital Alliance Securities. Yes, Vinod. Today, the Columbus Stock Exchange concluded on a slightly negative note compared to yesterday, due to high levels of selling towards the end of the trading session. The market ended at 11,504 points, marking a 26.97 point decrease from the previous session with a turnover of 539 million rupees. The SL20 index also experienced a downward movement of 1.53 points to end the day at 3,307 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors, with high turnovers recorded on Access Engineering PLC and Chevron Lubricants PLC. The top five gainers for the day were Industrial Asphalts, SMB Leasing PLC, UB Finance PLC, Dialogue Finance and HVA Foods PLC. The top five losers for the day were SMB Leasing Non-Voting, Lee Hedges PLC, Paragon Ceylon PLC, Ceylon Printers and Standard Capital PLC. Well, it's been a week of positive momentum for the Columbus Stock Exchange with four consecutive days of gains. However, the week closed on a negative note, ending in the red. Well, to get a summary of this week's market performance, we now turn to Ranjan Ranatunga from First Capital Holdings. Despite the marginal drop in the index during today's session, SPI closed the week on a positive note, gaining by 1.8% compared to the previous week, while on a year-to-date basis, the SPI has gained by 8.4%. 
The positive, positive sentiment surrounding the market was largely driven by the improved profitability observed on the listed corporate earnings, while the recent developments in the political space, including the handing over of the presidential nominations, also contributed to the positive sentiment in the market today. Moreover, we, on a weekly average turnover, the market, the market was up by 32.3% for a weekly average turnover of 740.3 million. On the notable trades, John Q's hold, holdings led the weekly aggregate turnover, while Access Engineering and Melzer Corp were the next biggest contributors. Furthermore, notable volumes were also traded on fabric makers, including both Haley's Fabric as well as TJ Lanka, uh, benefited by the improved order book and escalation in crisis in Bangladesh, which can temporarily shift orders to Sri Lanka from Bangladesh. Moreover, active participation was also observed on the Aiken Spence, Haley's and Sidon Tobel Company following good results reported for the quarter. Thank you. Gold prices steadied today and were headed for a weekly gain on optimism about a US interest rate cut while traders awaited Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell's speech which is due next week on the queue size of the cut. Sport gold was nearly unchanged at $2,457.14 per ounce but has gained more than 1% so far this week. Well, US gold futures rose 0.1% to $2,494.04. U.S. economic data this week is fierce about a recession, but traders are convinced the Fed will slash rates in September. Markets see a 75% chance of a 25 basis cut next month and a 25% chance of a 50 BPS reduction. Meanwhile, oil prices dipped slightly today but were poised to close out the week with gains for the second consecutive week. The positive sentiment was fueled by a resilient US economy and declining interest rates which boosted hopes for increased oil demand. Brent crude futures expiring in October fell $0.15 to $80.94 a barrel while West Texas Intermediate crude futures dropped 0.2% to $76.85 a barrel. Despite the slight dip, both contracts were on track for weekly gains of between 1.5% and 2%. While traders remain cautious about escalating tensions in the Middle East, adding a risk premium to crude prices, overall gains were tempered by persistent concerns over China's economic slowdown. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated against the US dollar at commercial banks in Sri Lanka today in comparison to yesterday. According to People's Bank, the buying and selling rates of the US dollar have dropped from 293 rupees and 26 cents to 292 rupees and 97 cents and from 303 rupees and 78 cents to 303 rupees and 48 cents respectively. At Commercial Bank, the buying and the selling rates of the US dollar have reduced from 293 rupees and 46 cents to 292 and 97 cents and from 303 rupees and 25 cents to 302 rupees and 75 cents respectively. Well, let's have a look at the rupees exchange rates against the other currencies now. A short commercial break now, some updates from the corporate sector right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Bandaranaike International Airport is pleased to announce the introduction of a new luxury bus service which is designed to offer a premium travel experience to passengers and airport visitors. Well, this luxury bus service has been launched in collaboration with the Ministry of Transport and Highways as a part of ongoing commitment to improving airport accessibility and convenience for passengers and airport visitors. This luxury bus service launched yesterday will provide a seamless and comfortable connection between the Bandaranaika International Airport and Colombo City. The service operates from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., linking the Bandaranaika International Airport with Port City, Colombo Fort Railway Station, Colombo Main Bus Stop and the Makumbara Multimodal Transport Centre. 
To further enhance convenience, luxury bus service will be available during operational hours, ensuring smooth transit for both passengers and the general public to and from the airport. This initiative aims to reduce travel stress, improve airport accessibility and offer an elevated experience for passengers and airport visitors. The shares of Cable Solutions Limited commenced trading on the Columbus Tech Stock Exchange on the 14th of August 2024. The shares have been listed on the Diri Savi board of the Columbus Stock Exchange. The occasion was marked with a special bell ringing ceremony. The company's initial public offering for over 80 million ordinary voting shares for sale at 7 rupees and 50 cents per share was notably oversubscribed on the opening day itself. The event was attended by Mr. Suren Madhanayaka, Chairman of Cable Solutions Limited, and many other representatives from the company. The Colombo Stock Exchange was represented at the event by its CEO, Mr. Rajiva Bandaranayaka, CRO, Mr. Renuka Vijay Vardhana, and the CSE Senior Management. Delivering the opening remarks, Mr. Rajiva Bandaranayaka congratulated Cable Solutions Limited on its progressive initiative to go public. He added that with an oversubscribed IPO on its opening day, Cable Solutions now becomes a PLC today and this milestone will elevate their corporate status and enhance relationships with customers, suppliers, bankers and investors. Established in 2008, Cable Solutions has excelled in cable manufacturing industry, exporting to 13 countries and generating 94% of its revenue from exports. Sri Lankan Airlines is aiming to capture travelers' attention with its safety protocols and they have launched a brand new onboard safety video featuring a range of Sri Lanka's most mesmerizing scenic locations. In the air travel industry, disseminating safety information is a regulatory prerequisite as well as a precaution to ensure that every passenger is aware of safety provisions and protocols. The new safety video transcends the basic requirement by incorporating the island's aesthetics and the signature warmth and care of Sri Lankans' onboard service to create a cinematic experience that is both informative and captivating. Richard Natal, the chief executive officer of Sri Lankan Airlines, said they're delighted to launch their brand new onboard safety video, which premiered to over 200 international travel trade partners at the Global Sales Conference. This video replaces the one they have had for over a decade and offers a fresh perspective on the island home that we proudly share with the world. While drawing the viewer's attention to vital safety details, the video unveils the tourist attractions of Sri Lankan Airlines Hub Sri Lanka. It transforms the flight cabin into various scenic ambiances, conveying that a journey aboard Sri Lankan Airlines to Sri Lanka is a visually captivating experience in itself. As the regulatory body, Civil Aviation Authority of Sri Lanka worked closely with the airline where the input and valuable insights of the former were immensely helpful to deliver an accurate and universally comprehensible safety demonstration. The in-flight entertainment system version of the video includes subtitles in Singhala and Tamil, enhancing the clarity and engagement of the safety guidelines being demonstrated. Winforce PLC, one of Sri Lanka's leader in the renewable energy sector, has announced an outstanding financial performance for the first quarter of the year 2024 and 2025. The company reported a robust 87% surge in EBITDA, reaching 1.95 billion rupees, which is a significant leap from 1 billion rupees in the same period last year. This remarkable growth highlights the company's strategic advancements and market strength. The group's consolidated revenue for the quarter ending on the 30th of June this year soared to 1.56 billion rupees, marking a 28% increase from 1.22 billion in the previous year. Net profits also demonstrated substantial growth, climbing 27% to 652 million, up from 514 million recorded in the first quarter of last year. This exceptional financial performance was largely driven by the successful commissioning of the Hirura's 15-megawatt wind power plant in July of 2023, which significantly enhanced Windforce's production capacity and revenue streams. The wind sector reported a 37% revenue increase. The hydro sector also delivered impressive results, with a 67% rise in electricity generation revenue bolstered by the inclusion of the Mahoma plant as a subsidiary since January of this year 
adding an extra 74 million to the group's earnings. Well, let's go for a short commercial break. Global developments right after this. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. In Asia today, Japan's topics jumped nearly 3% and Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index rose nearly 1.8%. The topics was poised for a weekly gain of almost 8%, its best performance since March 2020, following heavy losses last week after a surprise Bank of Japan rate cut sent the yen soaring against the dollar, raking yen funded stock trades. South Korea's Kospi returned from a public holiday to trade 1.99% higher, ending at 2,697.23. Australia's S&P A6200 rose nearly 1.34%, closing at 7,971.1%. Wall Street's main indexes closed higher with the Nasdaq rising more than 2% after July US retail sales data signaled a resilient consumer spending, allowing fears of an imminent recession in the world's largest economy. Wall Street's main indexes ended higher on Thursday after July retail sales data signaled resilient consumer spending, soothing investors' fears of a potential recession. The Dow added 1.4%, the S&P 500 climbed 1.6%, and the Nasdaq soared more than 2.3%. Retail sales increased 1% in July, the biggest jump in a year and a half. That is fears of a sharp economic slowdown fanned by a jump in the unemployment rate. A separate reading Thursday showed the number of Americans filing new applications for unemployment benefits fell unexpectedly last week. And investors cheered retail bellwether Walmart after it raised its annual profit forecast for the second time this year, sending its shares up more than 6.5%. Among other movers, Cisco Systems rose 6.8% after it forecast better-than-expected first-quarter revenue and said it was cutting 7% of its global workforce. Nike climbed 5% as billionaire investor Bill Ackman took new stakes in the sportswear company. And Ulta Beauty jumped more than 11% after Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway acquired a stake in the cosmetic store chain. Alibaba missed market expectations for first quarter revenue as the company's domestic e-commerce sales came under pressure from cautious spending by Chinese consumers in a faltering economy. Alibaba's first quarter revenue missed market expectations on Thursday. The Chinese giant reported revenue of just under $34 billion for the quarter ended June 30th. Domestic e-commerce sales came under pressure from cautious spending by consumers. Alibaba's home market has undergone a halting economic recovery. Chinese consumers have seen spending power hit by a persistently weak property market and high job insecurity levels. Alibaba also faces tough competition from rivals including JD.com and discount-focused retail platforms like Pinduadua. Revenue at the firm's domestic e-commerce arm fell 1%, despite seeing a double-digit rise in the number of buyers and their purchase frequency. Chinese e-commerce giants have resorted to heavy discounting and promotions to attract shoppers. But the tactic has pressured margins across the retail sector. In June, sales at China's mid-year e-commerce sales festival fell for the first time ever according to third-party estimates. That was despite efforts by major platforms to give out offers for an extended period to win consumers. Alibaba executives have said in recent quarters that bigger purchasing and the introduction of new tools for merchants will increase advertising and customer management revenue to the platform in the future. US listed shares of Alibaba reversed earlier losses to rise about 2% in early Thursday trade. Well, that marks the conclusion of the final bulletin of the Nightly Business Report for the week. We'll see you again on Monday with the latest happenings around the business globe. Until then, I'm Vinod Varnasurya. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Good night.